Hello, welcome to another episode of Discussion with a Tree. And I'm joined again by Mr. Robert Dold, the tree. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you, Mikhail? Mikhail? Okay. <laughs> Mikhail, um, I am doing. <laughs> I'm doing quite well, thank you. Um, today we were. I asked you to give me some thoughts on immortality. So you have the floor. Okay. Um, is there any specific area you would like me to cover? Well, we, we've we seen in the Bible that there seems to be this story of people living very long periods of time, like 500,000 years. Is that real? Um, well, that's not long. So it's longer I than what we're have used to. to. Well, there's a lot of things that are longer than we're used to. <laughs> so how, how long? How, how long has the Earth been alive? Well, yeah, of course I know, but my question to you is <laughs> like, yeah. But it, 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 it's um, it's really uh, a matter of how you define how long we've been, how, how long people live. But you're talking about the classical. You're, you're born and you live more than 100 years. And the answer is, um, without a doubt, the, the, the human body can um, live for longer than um, what we live. It's really the programming, but it's also the setting and you have to remember <clears throat> for the for the last hundred years um, all of the uh, bacteria and all of the uh, virus all of the uh, infection all of the things that we've created um, medications for medicines for um, starting from um, people playing around with things that they shouldn't have been playing with which is alchemy um, the, 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 the Egyptians, um, which really are not ancient Egyptians, it's really not that long ago, um, they were playing with, um, with a show, showbread. Um, so uh, the pyramids were built for a specific reason, and uh, most people haven't figured out and everybody throws around all sorts of ideas. But there was a stuff called showbread that, would, that people would um, eat. Um, but basically it was, um, it was gold that was, um, when they were smelting it and superheating it, there was this extra powder left around. Um, very much like um, now, we, now we've taken um, carbon and separated it from pencils. And so now everybody talks about, um, oh, what is that called again? Uh, the, the new stuff that they're going to try to make batteries out of. Um, I've got so many. I'm dealing with uh, all of the uh, atomic names right now. But basically... You, you take you take gold and you heat, superheat it, and it separates into its atomic form, and it creates a white powder. And um, you can collect it, and you can contain it with inside of gold foil, um, since the gold foil, you know, it'll stick to it, because metals will actually re recombine by themselves and melt right into themselves, form, forming just just like the the earth was formed. But basically, you eat that stuff. And um, the uh, gold atoms um, connect to the uh, DNA um, at the molecular level, and they suddenly make people um, hypersensitive, and it changes the DNA 
um, due to the electrical um, connectivity. Um, so electric signals can go through much faster. So suddenly that started, um, you know, it didn't change everybody, but from there it started changing how long people um, lived because it started changing, um, people started cha messing with the DNA a long time ago. Um, and, and, and from there, everything else falls off of the DNA into the um, RNA replication and into the bone marrow and all that kind of stuff. But then you also have, um, you know, now we have a lot of diseases which have advanced. And a long time ago, there wasn't th those diseases. So they've done um, all sorts of um, studies in, uh, uh, you know, all sorts of journals, uh, researchers. Uh, this, is, this is not like a new topic, a, a study immortality from a biological sense as to how long people could actually live. And right now um, they estimate that uh, the, the maximum lifetime would be between 120 to 150 years, um, after which, the researchers would anticipate a complete loss of resilience, the body's ability to recover from things like illness and injury. And the injury wouldn't be from actual injury, but due to the bacteria. So the bacteria on top of the skin that live on the skin and the bacteria that live on our guts, we have a very advanced system. Um, the system that is made um, for when a person uh, dies, um, the system of uh, rigor mortis that sets in, and then from there the process um, takes over, and the person start, the person um, has things that are carried from um, from the womb um, that then come out and they eat the person from the inside out. All 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 of the uh, living um, you know biological um, systems have a way to um, decompose um, and, uh, and and get, you know, basically put the body back into the ground. So, it, 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 so, so you know, like we're, we're life forms, and exactly the way um, I would die and as a tree um, decompose and melt right back in, we all just melt right back in. And maggots uh, grow and the bacteria and everything else and, People walk up to things and they've eaten themselves inside out. And so those systems have changed. So right now we would only be able to, you know, right now we, we've shortened our lifespan. Um, so at the very beginning we were built for, oh, 800 to 1500 years. And if we were, you know, if people at the, in those times um, long ago would have known um, about eating healthier um, you know, people at that time were scavenging and scrounging for food, or now we have plenty of food, but the food that we have um, isn't um, even 10% of what the food was as far as the value. So food value has really decreased our life expectancy. Um, and, and the way that we treat our bodies, because we really don't care. I mean, I drink alcohol. I mean, I don't drink any alcohol, but I drink coffee, and um, I don't um, smoke, but I sit. Sitting and coffee are actually worse than smoking and alcohol. Really? For, for, for the body. Mm -hmm. Even though alcohol it has added problems where the, um, the, the alcohol causes um, – uh, uh, certain other things. So there's, there, there's secondary and tertiary, um, and from there um, it goes um, into the next, into the next, into the next, into the next um, possibility of problems that something causes when something is not right. Like if you don't have enough vitamin C, um, right. it, it, you don't have to wait till you're, you're at scurvy. If you're down 10%, if you're down 5%, um, the body starts um, allocating and changing its um, it, it, its resources according to that um, thing. So 
you know, if, if people changed, if people change all of their, um, if, if the food started being grown as natural, but the problem is that now that, now that all the pesticides and all of the, uh, you know, hormones for animals and all of the, uh, all, all of the uh, hormones for plants, all of the chemicals, you know, uh, Monsanto, uh, I, I think as a company, um, all, all of the, uh, you know, especially all of the, um, the, the weed killers and all of those things that were used for a long time, Roundup and everything. Um, everybody in the world right now um, pretty much has, um, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, the amount of stuff that's already been installed in every living child, because it, the, the earth is a system. And whatever people throw up into the air, it lands down on all of the, all, all it, it's no, no different than a Chernobyl. And that whole entire area um, has um, nuclear fallout everywhere. Well, so, okay, so we don't have to go to the extreme. It's not nuclear fallout. Um, but the whole entire world is covered with, um, with uh, humans um, that are synthetically produced that then fall down, that then are no longer um, compatible with the human body. And then yeah. from there, you, you also have all of the uh, bird flus, the chicken, you know, the, 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 coronavirus. the, the mad cow, the coronaviruses, the mad cow diseases. And so once you have those diseases at an extreme level, then you have people um, getting sick and dying, but that doesn't mean that, that that's that's once you're you're at like ninety percent saturation of something that then attacks your body. Um, our bodies are constantly fighting off all of the three percent things that are not even noticeable that we don't even pay attention to. It's a huge war. So 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 the war that we put ourselves in is what causes the problem. Does yeah, I mean, I yeah, I I've heard that all women have rocket fuel in their breast milk now. Oh, it, it, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot. I mean, the, the chemical list um, is incredible because we have a periodic table with a certain amount of elements, but I deal with um, things that are not on the periodic table. So there's a lot of elements that are not on the periodic table yet. That won't be for a long time. Um, you know, pe pe people are kept from that type of information. And I mean, I have things that are not on the periodic table. And then there's also some things that are called sub substance less substances, where there's no substance there, but there's still the action ability of what's uh, there in the air. And not to go way into that, because I don't really like to cat out of the bag, so to say, but there's this stuff, um, there, there, there's, you have regular water, and everybody has regular water in their bodies. So water is a component of the body, but water is a very dangerous thing, and people don't really understand it. And it's um, completely benign in certain aspects. It's no different than table salt. You take table salt, and you separate um, the, 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 the chlorine from the um, potassium and the potassium, you know, the, the, the I mean, from, from, the, from the sodium, so, so, sodium and the chlorine. So you have, you, you have um, NaCl and suddenly you then have the chlorine separated and the chlorine is a green gas. Table salt looks completely benign. That chlorine gas will kill you. So we have stuff inside of us. Um, that will kill us in a heartbeat. We, we have very dangerous chemicals inside of us, and water is one of them. So when you take water and you separate it um, uh, through electrolysis, um, it, you, know, you separate it into its elemental forms, but they're not actually um, free radical elemental forms. They're not, it's not like singlet oxygen. There, there are two oxygens put together, so it's an H, two and an O, but the O's are two O's at the same time. So when you actually have them, you know, around, um, they're, they're, they're a lot more, they're a little bit more complex than, than, than the, the, the H2O references when they're in the air. 
Now, when you have them in a, in a glass, water is not actually water because all of the water is what's called disassociated, and the um, oxygens and the hydrogens are constantly jumping off of each other and jumping onto other ones. And they're just doing that and bouncing back and forth because they're, they're energized and they're trying to um, have some sort of equilibrium, but they're also attracted to, to each other. That's why water sticks to it. And the magnetism, and as things move around, it creates a magnetism and it makes things push apart and pull together as, as the attraction. And you have surface tension. You have all sorts of stuff going on in the water, but it's disassociated. And what that does is when everything jumps apart for a little bit, um, it allows for other things to jump in. So if you have like the like a glass of water open, it'll suck everything out of the air that's junk. And then all of a sudden, a week later, the water will start growing stuff. And before you know it, you have a little um, aquarium uh, full of um, all sorts of plants and uh, you know bi- you know bacteria and little things floating around moving. But you start off with perfectly clean water, and you and and you separate it through electrolysis, and that's rocket fuel. So the, 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 the old um, space shuttle um, and a lot of the uh, space, you know, type of things, um, the, the ones that still use water as a propellant, as, as rocket fuel, um, one, one side of a tank, you know, and they're, and they're talking about hydrogen in, for, in different ways, but that, that's basically um, hydrogen by itself is a fuel. Oxygen by, by itself is an oxidizer. Um, so... From there, you know, if you have plain, simple oxygen around, it'll blow things up due to to it being an oxidizer. And the hydrogens um, are, you know, dangerous. So so these are dangerous materials, just in simple water that people don't understand. So we have things inside of our system that, you know, I mean, there's people that spontaneously combust. There's, um, there's, there's, There's nuclear reactions going on in the body. At a, at, a, uh, at, a, at an atomic level that people don't pay attention to as to how we actually generate heat and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and the body is very complex. So, we, you know, humans have really done a lot of their bodies. And so let's bring but this let down. Let me finish one more. Let me just yeah. finish one more point. I don't want to cut you off. I didn't finish the thing about the, uh, the water once you separate it with the electrolysis. What I was talking about, substanceless substances, was that um, if you do it in a certain way where the electrolysis separates things, there's a guy named um, George Brown that found out that there was a different type of gas um, and it was acting differently. um, And it was hydrogen and oxygen that was separated and it became known as Brown's gas. And um, then people call it HHO. I call it um, EEW, which is elect- in, in a certain way, if you do it a different way than most of the people, you end up with what's called EEW, with this, which is electrically expanded water, and that's not on the periodic table. So all of a sudden, because you, you, you can't, you know, recognize or measure the electricity content, it, but it's changed. So you change the quantities of electricity inside of water, and you have different substances. Sorry, oh, okay. Nothing. No, that's fine. That that's um so let's bring it down though to just the practical. Um if you were to give advice to people to to live longer. I mean, given all the what you what you've already pointed out that we're already immersed in pollutants that we've created and diseases that we've sort of incubated through our through the way we live our society but isn't there a way a for way to-, to for us to to live longer to extend our lives yeah and an extension of life um requires um something that makes the system work better and right now we're going in the way that um, hepatitis is on the rise, and it's occurring without people knowing why it's happening, and it's happening to children. You have cancer all over the place running rampant. You, ha- you, you have diabetes, which is all over the place, crazy. So people are um, 
damaging themselves. And um, yes, um, about 90% of it is the food that people eat and people don't drink water correctly. Um, but the problem is that um, the human body isn't all a uh, machine. So this, this idea of AI machines being able to think and become like humans, um, they'd all be broken in 10 years. If, if you made a whole entire, uh, if you made a civilization of, 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 of androids that had to rebuild themselves, <clears throat> they wouldn't be able to keep up with the manufacturing of themselves, so they'd all be dead within 10 to 20 years. They, they'd end up like, a, like, like, like an old Ford found on the road dead. Um, machines. Uh, uh, humans have an, an, an innate ability um, to change things. And like people live in houses for 50, 100 years and people move out of houses. And for some reason, the houses after three years, they, they are toast. They are dilapidated without um, just somebody living inside of them. So there's a lot of communication going on with the, the, that it, it's hard to explain. Um, but if I was going to tell somebody to live longer, I would tell them to find a way to actually give a little of themselves to others um, to try to make friendships because it's really not a biological thing that's damaging people. It's their inability to have friendships that are actually true and lasting. Um, so most people, if you ask them if they have friends, they have lots of acquaintances. They will always say yes, but they're, basically lying and they, they they'd be lucky if they could stick their middle finger up as one but that's probably the first finger that they would stick up <laughs> rather than taking the time to um accept somebody to point a finger at them because it's a shooting gallery yeah i mean this was pointed out in the book that you recommended to me about uh games games people play and the idea that yeah by dr eric burns mm -hmm. yeah that 19, 1958 mm -hmm. yeah Do, that, dr eric burns games people play the birth of transactional analysis and he writes the book and they throw the book at him throw him out of his phd they strip him of all of his things they laugh at him they throw him out no longer is capable is able to uh, continue working as a clinical um, psychiatrist, which he had been doing for a long time. He was already old when you know pretty 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 late in age. And, you know uh, you know I, I believe he was like 62 at the time, so he was already you know in time for retirement. But they throw him out anyway, and um, you know because he writes that people are not actually in need of um, clinical, um, uh, classical clinic, you know, clinical um, psychiatry. And plus there was about 500 different forms where everybody was fighting that theirs was correct. So nobody even knew what clinical psych, psych, psychiatry or the psychology of human beings. And people have been having a hard time because everybody, everybody has changed um, the idea of the um, philos, the idea of the philosophy, the idea of um, uh, the study of everything, and um, they, they end up uh, turning it into a conversation about how the brain functions and what causes, um, you know, people to be having um, mental um, problems or mental disabilities. And they completely ignore um, all of the history of life that's shown that people are dealing with a mind which is not controlled by the um, brain, which the brain is the um, AI function of a computer, um, but the thinking is different. So the, so, so the computer, can t you, you take apart the human brain and you can, you can look at the clock. Um, you can look at all the pieces of the clock, but it cannot tell you the time of day as far as what's actually happening out there. Now, you can put a clock there and say, oh, it's 10 o'clock today. 
but you you know we know what's going on um, from New York to California or in, in, in France around the world, um, and that's not actually a brain function. It's it's our our, our separate ability ability of our minds and what we choose to pay attention to. Well, um, the, so, so there's the reason, a lot going on. The reason I was bringing him up because he. Yeah, I was. I just started reading this book, and he's talking about how just as important is nutrition to the body is this connection with other human beings. It's it's like if you lose that, it's 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 just as bad as losing food. No, no, it's worse. It's worse, even worse. Yeah, it's worse because people go through lifetimes of starvation without food. As soon right. as they don't have somebody that is there with them, um, loneliness and um, excluding people or people that become, um, you know, alone um, face real serious um, life battles. That, that causes stresses and anxieties and um, depressions and all of those things. And there is actually no such thing as depression. Depression doesn't exist. Anxiety doesn't exist. There's no such thing. It's imagined. And the imagination is a very dangerous place to be. The abyss of people's um, um, protectionistic ways that have been developed that nobody allows anybody even to look at them. What are you looking at? Jump back, fish face. Get off of my shit, basically. People are nasty, condescending, downright rude. And that is what's killing the people that are that way. They so they it, are that way because they're of their unchecked imagination, right? I mean, it, it, people don't know how to turn off their brain. It's not unchecked. No, people do it willingly. People don't. People people like the ability to decide. This is not something that they learned after they were three years old. They learned this in their crib. Um, by the time that they were three weeks old and by the time that they are three months old, this is an argument that they have with their parents or not having parents or having people walking around and them not being able to make connections. So the damage is already done by the time. So by, by the time a child is two, no, by the time, by the time a child is three months old, um, if the child hasn't gotten connection and love, parents have a handful on their hands. So it's then come the terrible twos that they say. There's no such thing as the terrible twos. It's all it's it's all a human construct. It's it's imagined by people not willing to pay just a little bit of attention to their children well, during um, the, uh, d- during the pregnancy, during the pregnancy stages where everything happens. It's not where right. the child is born. Well, I mean, both you need to, right? I mean, it's that's the crucial time. But it's all crucial. It's yeah. No, but I mean, the, I just found it. I mean, something that I had never really heard. I guess it got kind of out of general consciousness that. That connection with human beings is is more important than food. To me, that was a big revelation and something that I'd never really considered. I always thought, well, a man can just live alone, no problem, as long as he has enough food and water and and you know has a hobby or something. <laughs> it never occurred to me how important it was to 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 make connections with people, real connections. And people have known this scientifically since the since the you know since the Renaissance era, since the 1500, 1500 A.D. So this is nothing new, and all of the um, all, all of the uh, 
um, study of everything that's that that was going on since Darwin. Um, Darwin knew all these things. That's why he was researching um, all of the different species and trying to document everything. He knew um, that it was all interconnected. So there's absolutely no excuse. You know, all of the researchers at NIH, you know, that, that was that was a normal thing that, you know, I mean, I was shown as a child is, you know, what happens to um, to a to a baby um, mouse that gets excluded. Yeah. And, and, and it, it dies. And then you have the one that gets electric shocks and it lives. So, so right. having, having electric shocks is, is, is as good as um, uh, getting love. As far as the biological part of growth, the, 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 the fully capable functioning, but then the love some kind of stimulation. Totally thing. It, the, yeah, right. You, you have to have stimulation, and then after stimulation, love creates a completely different being or animal. And so AI would not be able to be stimulated in that way no matter what type of algorithms they throw at it. So it's it's wishful thinking. So we have some some caller again here. Should we let them on? Okay. Let's see what we got here. Hello. Caller? Yes, hello? Yes. Hey, my name is Cameron. Um and I think you're totally fucking stupid. You're full of shit. I think you're a huge disappointment to your dad and uh he <laughs> I don't know. I think your dad's gay. Actually, I know your dad's gay. <laughs> well, that's 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 excellent. He just, Thank you. I appreciate that. He just that. hung up. <laughs> that's okay. That was kind of funny. Um, I you know, I think that was a more of a prank me. prank call. Sure. I think it was a compliment, actually. I wish I, you know, I wish I thought that highly of my father. <laughs> well, question here. Um, I'll probably edit this guy out because he didn't really contribute Wait. anything. Thank you, man. Mm-hmm. Got it, got it, got it. But in terms of back to this discussion here of longevity, because I've always been – I don't know. I've always found that the the prospect of death in the mind of humanity uh, is a sort of thing that that drives the person insane. I mean, the idea that you're going to die, and I've never fully accepted. Yeah, yeah. because I've always thought that most animals don't have the concept, and they kind of live their lives, and they don't have to even think about it. Like, yes, they'll die, but they don't contemplate death and yet humans do and I feel like there's so many problems that come from it just the the thought of it maybe, well, animals maybe do not, contemplate death they as a con, as a self-conscious thing uh not not as a self-conscious thing as uh, with a consequence but they are constantly um thinking about and on guard it's 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 not the same as a human where the human um has a soul which makes the human different. And um but that does not mean that animals are soul less. They are just um their their brains are uh their 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 storage, um the brain storage is set up differently than a human. So how they recall um, time. They, they 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 still have time, recall it, and can react according to everything that they've um, been through and assimilated. So they can actually um, do they they can do very well in thinking, and, and they build um uh, they they build their real societies as um, villages. So 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 you have very um, it's different for humans. But do they 
do they think of themselves as finite the way humans do? No, humans have a humans have a different programming going on, and a different um, mental backup system. And then they also have the mind, which is a different thing um, to 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 ponder. So you'll never see um, monkeys um, looking at the stars and counting them. They they'll look out at the stars and they'll see everything, but they they won't actually. I start 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 thinking of spaces in the clouds. That that's a human thing. But we're we're we're, uh, we're we're not advanced as far as animals go, but we have a wider ranging view, and the the soul is a very complicated thing, and the soul is actually part of the um the where philosophy came from, which is the philos, which was to define and study that, if that makes sense. Oh, we have another caller here. Let's see what they say here. Hopefully it's somebody with a little more wisdom. It is, it is. <laughs> hello. Yes, hello. Yes. So my husband called you. Uh, a few minutes ago, the prank call, and oh, I just good. wanted to apologize because I thought it was very rude. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just oh, wanted to no, apologize. No, no. It it is quite okay. Don't 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 don't. Uh, we're we're in a discussion that doesn't you know no, we're no, agreeable. We, don't worry. We just like to call like prank calls. But I thought that one was rude, so I I wanted to apologize. I'm sorry. I, I absolutely do not worry about it. Thank yeah, you we, very much. We found no, it no, funny. thank you for being. Thank you. You you you're, you're special, and I hope your husband appreciates you there. You get you get a you get, you you'll get a gold medal. Um, <laughs> feel bad for Thanks. your husband there. I know your husband's just a joker. <laughs> ah. <he is. laughs> He just needs to anyway, think. he's off. She, he, she he, hung need, up. he needs he needs exactly what we're talking about. His connection with people. Right, and I think so he if was that, if that, if that in a was, way trying to get if them. That was, if that was his way to reach out and communicate, then we owe it to him for the sake of society. Right. Um so I wouldn't edit him out. He's part of the show. Okay, we'll leave him in. We'll leave and the wife too, because I, I it was very nice sure. of her too. That that, that <laughs> was very that was very special of her. He actually called back and I didn't pick it up because I didn't want to. And then he hung up and then she hung she called in. So um, that's okay. That so he fantastic. is definitely like seeking. It. Seeking some connection. Um, he's he is he's he's feeling threatened. So he's basically in a very dark place, and nobody ever paid attention. And people, um, Gandhi, um, Gandhi said that Gandhi pointed it out, and it wasn't actually Gandhi's thing, but everybody attributes it to Gandhi where when you tell people the truth that they immediately vehemently attack you and will go to the point of killing you. And then they will suddenly say that they knew all along. So it goes from one extreme to the other, kind of like a pendulum. So... You know, if you go online, you can get you can get that Gandhi quoting, and you know, it's basically that the need for connection. Does that make sense? Yes. So that, it that, stand... that's more important than the biological. So the so then, what you're saying is that more than like. Your nutrition. I mean, obviously that's very important. Oh, oh hold on. But be, before you go forward with that thought, 
Let me explain. Nutrition does not work with the emotional system of the human working. So first you get attention and your body works a certain type of way. When people don't get certain type of attention, they're going to get the attention in a completely different way. And the body, the brain, the, the brain has certain nutritional things that it needs made in the spinal cord for how it is going to deal with everything. So if it deals with things where it's constantly getting attacked, the body produces a lot more adrenaline, a lot more of the things that are quick reactors. So when, when, when the brain, when, when, you're, when you're attacked by a bear, you use all of your adrenaline um, correctly. When you almost get into a car accident, which is something, you know, you, we don't have bears out there, but people almost get into a car accident and they don't get into a car accident and all of the adrenaline gets thrown into the body and now it has a huge problem. It's kind of like um, if you have constant adrenaline being thrown into the body, it's kind of like having your sugar level spike up and your, um, your, 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 your system, of, you know, the, the, the insulin and everything spiking up, which is a reaction to it. So you have all of these reactions going on to action. And all of those actions and reactions start off with your connections and the emotional part. So food is actually an, an emotional Thing. So people that eat emotionally end up either anorexic, they end up um, bulimic, they end up overweight, they end up dehydrated, or they end up completely hydrated. And you, you, it doesn't take a lot to feed a person. And you can have very healthy people with very little Food and people can actually eat um, a meal every two to three weeks and survive on nuts and berries, and that's how the um, that's how the the, the our, our ancestors used to live in foraging situations where food food was very scarce until they ended up um, finding a way before there were tools to kill to, to find a dead animal. Um, they you know people were eating um, roadkill basically. Um, that somebody that someone they, they were forging for something that was left behind, and then they survived, and then came the the the, the age of fire, and then came the age uh, the bronze age, and then you had metals, and then they finally were, you know, but you you ended up having them using sticks, and then it took a long time before they were actually, you know, I mean, they, humans were very adaptive, so they did very well um, making stone age tools. And um, but they were still not eating regularly, but it didn't take that much. So you still have the same thing out in in um, third world countries um, where there's a lot of um, starvation, and, and and people go really quite a long way with very little food. Yeah, well, I mean, there's this new rage of what, what's called intermittent fasting. Where people don't, which I actually do. I I try not to eat for like 20 hours at, during the day because I found that my mind is much clearer with with if I give my body just a gap of 20 hours of no food, just water. Yeah, but that's that, that's that's um that's dangerous. Um, that that that's not really good for the body. Um. Okay. It really, it, it, you, you, you have to get the emotional stuff down, done first. And once you have the emotional stuff, then you can do your 24 or 48 hours of fasting or five days or you can go on. But your body, it's, it's kind of like, um, like, like running a marathon. Um, people that run a marathon um, – don't need oxygen because their bodies um, start, for, you know, you, you know, you don't start off running a 26 mile marathon. Um, you start off at the beginning and the body starts building into that. And once your body's ready for it. So as long as you're not um, suddenly intermittent, fa intermittent fasting, um, then 
you know, you, you, you just don't want to be doing it like a weekend warrior because you'll, 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 you'll damage the uh, systems that storage systems that suddenly say, oh, there's a lot. Uh, oh, no, hold on. There's not a lot. Hmm. How long do we have to wait? Oh, did the mail come today? Did the mail come today? Well, that, the, the, the body recognizes it as ma- mail delivery. And if the mail, del- oh, it's, it hasn't come, well, let's not wait for it tomorrow. The system starts shutting down. All of a sudden, somebody goes out and goes for a jog. And the person can keel over dead right there, or they can, you know, they, they can have, you know, dehydration problems, or they can, according to the different storage things, um, you can, you, you can, you can, you, it might be good for the brain, but it's not good for the rest of the entire body. And we have muscles, tissue, lots of different organs in the body that if you don't treat them correctly, they'll shut down. So, how often i mean because i found that unless i unless i really give myself some at least a, a good while of not eating like not only do i gain a lot of weight i i am very foggy in the mind so is it just well, that i'm not the, having the the, fo- the the fogginess in your mind is from the imbalances. And when you don't eat um, like on a schedule, it, it, the, the first thing, it, before you even talk about eating, you have to talk about sleeping. And it, um, I, I, I am a tree, and so I have, you know, I have to deal with the, um, with, with the rhythms, the six, it's called what is it called circadian, circadian. rhythms and yeah yeah circadian rhythms and so the circadian rhythms uh, that everybody talks about um you know they're not really accurate because there's people that can sleep all day and be awake all night and actually the but the body trains itself to live off of um the nighttime in That's the me. nighttime, and animal, animals do that too. Um, but if you're if you're up at night and you're up in the daytime at all times, um, and you don't give the body some sort of um, way rest. to know when it's a rest, then you never actually go into rest, and that causes the fogginess. Um, another thing that causes the fogginess is um, the, 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 the glucose inside of the brain and how much the brain, um, you know, how you work the brain. So if you, if you spend all week um, doing a lot of uh, sitting and lots of hard um, thinking tasks where you're actually um, using a lot of um, the, 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 the glucose and on a Saturday – you sit there and do nothing and you sleep all day. And then on Sunday you go and you run a, um, a, a, a marathon or, or, or a few miles or take a really long walk. And it's, you know, you have a whole week doing a certain thing. Then Saturday you do completely, if something, you do a completely different um, thing on Sunday, you do a completely different thing. And, what does that do to the body after three years? So it's not about one week. A few weeks, we have, we have enough storage of chemicals that we can manage um, all sorts of adversity for about a month and a half. Since, our, uh, since the chemicals in the lower um, spine that are being produced um, that go up the spine and then go into the into the back of the cortex and into the brain, it takes about three months of production and it's three months of production and storage. So you, you have a, you have a, you know, you have a lot, you know, you have a, you still have all of the um, blood that's delivering oxygen. You still have a lot of, uh, of the different things going on as far as your, your, your daily uh, uh, glucose, um, the, the brain glucose, but, most people don't really know how to start running their brains off of fat 
and fats will do the job of um, running their brain and replacing the glucose. But but it, it, it's more about how over time, how level you keep your, you go to sleep, you get real sleep, you wake up, you give the body something to go on so that it can start doing the storage correctly. If not, you're not going to store anything. Right. You know, I mean, sleep is very, very important. And um, I try to sleep get... Sleep is a superpower. Yeah. I try to get as much, you know, as I can. I mean, at least seven and a half, eight hours. Um but the um, just the 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 constant eating I feel like is is a problem. I mean, it seems like people just kind of eat. They just eat and eat and eat. And and I could. I mean, if I really was, if I didn't have any discipline about it, I would just be eating every three hours. And I it does. I don't think that's good for me. But that's that's from that's because it's emotional. It's not you. you, you, you when people um, feel like it's from uh, from a dissatisfaction in life somewhere, it's a dopamine deficiency. Uh, no, it's not actually a dopamine deficiency. Um, it, it, it's the quality and quantity of dopamine that you have stored. Um, but it's the type of um, it's the type of uh, dopamine that you're actually producing. So there's different qualities, and um, the researchers at the National Institutes of Health and and all of the, the all of the um, different places, the, far, the, 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 the 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 money pharmaceuticals that were doing all of the research to try to make um, synthetic dopamine. That's where LSD comes from. So LSD is synthetic dopamine. Um, how well did they do? Well, that just goes to show the range of how far you can go into from the synthetic. So it's a huge range between um, really um, dopamine that really wakes you up, your, your, your healthy dopamine, and dopamine that has, starts having a 10% deficiency in quality changes things a lot, or 10% in quantity deficiency. Um, that's um, due to the sleep, due to the emotional state. Um, so people actually um, end up what's called fiending. And people that end up starting to have um, uh, uh, um The munchies, things where yeah. the body is yelling out, um, give me something or I won't be satisfied. And a lot of the times people look for, um, you know, people will do anything. That's why uh, um, the, 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 the chilies and the hot foods are so popular. The salts are, um, salts are not about popular. Those are a dire necessity because without salt, um, your brain and, and the connectivity, um, uh, you don't get your electrical signals to, 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 to be moved. So salt is essential for the brain function and for the body function, for, for, for fluids, for fluid retention, for you, know, fluid you have retention, to yeah. stay hydrated. And there, there, there's constructive and destructive um, fluid retention. There, there's very constructive fluid retention. So you need to have um, salt. You, you have to have potassium. You have to. There's, there's all sorts of um, chemical reactions going on. So it's really about the chemical reactions that are allowed to occur while there, there's these billion different things going on every fraction of a second. And if everything is working perfectly and things get um, swept out of the way and your dopamine goes in and it's nice and clean and everything was cleaned up before the dopamine was thrown in. So a lot of it has to do with how the system is cleaned up at night. So people go to sleep at night. Um, they don't know anything about the urea cycle, um, the, the, the when to urinate, how to urinate. You know, they hold their urine or they're, 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 they're lazy about different types of things or they don't sip a little bit of water and drink during the day. 
there's a lot that goes into it. it it's it's mind boggling, but I mean, it's we have not another difficult once you. We have another caller okay. here. Let's let's see what they have sure. to say. Hello. Are you there, caller? I yeah, I'm kind of multitasking, one. but um, I'm just listening. Oh, you're just listening. Okay. Thank you for listening. I'll keep you on hold there. So um, some people like to call in and listen on their phone. That's okay. That's, so that's what he's doing. But um, mm-hmm. but but so, yeah, I mean, this, the idea that, there's this emotional issue that people are trying to use food to solve. What's your advice to, to not people? solve replace replace. And the replacement doesn't actually replace. Um, right. It um, calls for and produces different chemicals to fill something where suddenly somebody is in need of eating certain things that the body doesn't need, but because the brain is having a lack of something in an emotional state, um, and, 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 and the body is then being turned off because um, the, the, the brain is now artificially telling um, a person that they're hungry um, to get um, potato chips with lots of yummy salt or chocolate, which is very, um, I, I eat a lot of chocolate because it's wonderfully addictive, and it's, but I make sure that I eat the kind that's um, really dark and pleasant tasting as regular, even dark chocolate, but extremely dark chocolate. But it, 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 it takes the edge off very quickly, and the brain's like, oh, I got what I wanted, but I only need a little bit. So it's, it's, there's, there's a lot that goes on with dealing with um, food craving and the attacking um, brain that then starts attacking the system by telling certain things to turn on, such as the uh, things to make your stomach um, uncomfortably rumble or your 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 um, mouth to become dry or, 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 your, or different types of the system, your palate um, starts, um, when, 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 you, when you start, it, it, can, it can start throwing out, um, it can start changing where the ammonia goes inside of the, the urea system and it starts messing with things and your tastes start to change inside of your mouth and nothing would be better for your mouth than some, because it trains itself. And it trains itself, like when I drink coffee, um, you know, it, it's, it's very difficult for me since I grew up with my parents feeding me lots of uh, sugar, lots of bread, lots of carbohydrates. And, it, you know, I grew up on peanut butter and jelly, and there's nothing worse than white bread with no nutritional value and, um, and jelly and peanuts that have become rancid because it's been sitting, you know, it's been, it's been um, produced uh, at a factory and it's, it's put up on a shelf and it's sold three months later, you know, food value leaves and all of a sudden the brain is struggling to eat and it'll eat itself alive. But instead of doing that, it turns on your systems um, on and off at will. And it's something where the brain actually is in control at that point of the physical systems. So the brain is, but doesn't the brain have an interest in keeping the body? Absolutely not. The the brain does not care about the body. Oh. The brain does not care about the body. Because the brain... um, it's, a, it's an allocation problem. It's an allocation thing. Okay. And if suddenly there's not going to be anything, what do you do? You go out and hoard. 
So if you know that, you know, if you know that there's a pandemic coming and there is, you know, if you see a couple people buying toilet paper, then suddenly why is there no toilet paper on the shelves? Because everybody went, you know, everybody went out and bought a ten year, you know, ten years supply, and and didn't leave any anything. That's the way the brain works. They, without people, do not care who ends up not having. So we, we don't care about society in that fashion. People don't um, help each other so that everybody has a certain amount and works together. The brain does not work with others. The brain does not work with itself, and the brain is is an enemy when there's not enough of something. And that's why the brain is its basically um, the, the, the enemy within type of scenario where people have coined that term, not me, um, the enemy within. But it, it, it's the internal, the internal fight of, you know, uh, keeping something out of your mouth and you will not stop thinking about it until you solve that problem. It, it drives sexuality. It drives the emotional state. Um, It's all about people's drives. So drives are very complex. And drives are called drives because when people are driven, they are no longer in control unless um, they are healthy, they learn lots of self-restraint and over time build up um, reserves and Um, have a way to have self-control over certain situations. Um, But when you say... At that point... Mm -hmm, Go ahead. No, go ahead. At that point... You don't end up with urges that you need to remove. If you you compensate um, for things that could become urges, it's like people that are healthy um, are are never going to have cancer um, and people that have deficiencies end up with cancer. Um, so you, you don't, if you end up with cancer, um, it's basically the body's way of attacking something. And there's, you know, urges work in the same exact way. If you're finding yourself with urges, um, if you satisfy those urges um, for a month, and then for two months, and you eat potato chips for the next three months, um, and you don't get to the root of it, you don't find out what it was that you were lacking. Um, if you didn't go out and buy some uh, spinach, some broccoli, um, some onions, some garlic, um, some, some ginger, um, you know, if you don't, you know, take um, and, and learn how to walk a little bit, um, drink water, get some rest, and you don't start taking care of yourself, um, the, the body is uh, basically using your sudden cravings. Uh, it's communicating with you, and most people don't actually recognize the body's actually communicating with them. Well, yeah, I mean, I, that's, that's sort of my test is for w- whether I have a real hunger or not. It's like, uh, I'll be like, well, could you eat a bowl of spinach right now? <laughs> so if, if, if the answer is no, then you're not really hungry. Well, that's, um, the, the, it takes a lot to juggle it because then there's the other side of the people that um, can think all day and they will work and they're capable of accessing all of their storages for three months. Um, like me, so I can actually access all of the storage that, I mean, I can stay up for days on end studying and reading and writing, and I can write quite a bit in one day. Um, It would drive people crazy seeing how much I can write and how much I can go through, and I'm multitasking, and I'm using lots of materials. And when you do that, um, you can very easily start forgetting uh, forgetting to eat, forgetting to drink water. Um, and if you don't have something internally that is um, that is mentally put in, I have mental um, I have a mental system where I have something that tells me every every five minutes I have this little you know this little thing that I have that it's um, that I've 
built in that, you know, it says drink water. Okay. It, it, it says, um, and move around a little bit if you've been sitting. And I try to, if, if I sit for one hour a day, I stand for three. And if I stand for three hours, um, I uh, sit down um, on the floor and I do stretching. Um, so if I'm not um, accommodating, um, you know, when I don't, if, if people don't know how to stretch and if they don't look at um, their entire day as um, it, it's, it's a daily exercise routine of training the muscles and not um, doing things that are bad because sitting is incredibly bad. Yeah, and sitting is, sitting is side, like smoking. Yeah, sitting and sitting sideways and laying in bed propped up where, where, where the back is twisted or, or the, there's a pillow behind your neck, that stuff will kill you. You, you, don't, it doesn't, you don't die, but you end up with emotional problems because you end up having back problems and it breaks your back and, and it's, it, it, it's, it's hurting the um, thing that's trying to produce the chemicals for the brain and people just don't take the time to think about that stuff. Yeah, talk about I, that. I can't, the, I, the the chemicals of the brain are produced in the lower spine, so sitting spine, would correct. would kind of cut them off, right? Correct. It, it's really a it's really very important that people know how to stand up, and people can actually research this very easily. It's it's really it's not a research project. It's it's not an exercise thing. It's not something that people need to um, take our, it, it, it's a go and you look up online or on or YouTube and you look up for how do you do the split? Not, not the way women can, you know, do, do the splits easier than men, but men doing splits. And there's, there, you mean like John Claude Van Damme? That, excuse me? Yes, exactly. Like that, where everybody thinks that that's, that, that's really um, impossible to do, and it's actually not. But people don't actually understand that when you, that, that when you push, put your legs apart, um, the body, when it's on top, of the, uh, on top of the pelvis, it doesn't want to go down. If you start, if you put the, um, your, your fingers in the back of your, the lower back, um, there's these two little um, dimples that everybody knows about in their back that they can touch regularly. That's where people have back pain and all that kind of stuff. But there, there's these two little dimples, and you can just put both of your hands back there and touch those things. And if you push forward on that area just a little bit enough, when you're doing the splits, if you can just um, rotate your um, thing, your, 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 your pelvis, um, then your, 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 your um, hip joints um, allow for your, your, your femur to rotate, and you can actually go start, you know, you, everything else has to, you know, takes time to do that. But the, the anatomy of the body is that if you push the spine forward, it's happier um, and most people keep the spine, um, the, the lower spine backwards as they sit all day, and they never take the time to stand up. And people can actually um, just walk up to a regular wall, just a regular flat wall. It seems kind of weird, but you just put your forehead on the, you, you just put your feet right to the wall, look at the wall, and then put your fore, forehead on it. And, and, and you let your, um, your, your, your stomach move towards the wall, and then little by little, it'll just touch, and you just sit there, and you just sit there for a minute, and that'll actually take your spine and help push it forward. But if you actually do what's called, like, um, it's like a squat, where, where um, people are squatting in place, um, and they go down, and it's not like exercise squatting, but they're just going down. And, like, people are not accustomed to that. They can sit up against the couch um, and then just have their 
their their their butts below their knees, and that actually stretches the back and allows the lower um, part of the the spine to hang all by itself, and that that auto aligns the back. So anybody that has back problems can can, can, can bypass the chiropractor and now. There's extreme cases where somebody has to actually pull all that stuff into place, but most people with, once they start having back stress from or, or back aches from sitting, they just uh, do a squat once or twice a day or 10 times, and then they start doing, people would start doing that regularly. They'd never have back problems again. And then that helps the spine um, heal and if you stop the production of chemicals, the body does not care and the brain does not care. Um, the body is going to work according to what the brain says and the brain doesn't care. It wants the chemicals and it's a slave, it's a, it's a slave driver. It's a taskmaster and it will not tell people sit correctly or it just says make it. And if okay. not, I'll, I'll shut you. If not, I'll shut you off. I'll kill you. Correct. So the brain doesn't care about living. No, no, the brain does care about living, but it's tyrant. It doesn't actually, um, it, it has the problem that the body likes to have its own control. So there's, there's, um, there, there's all sorts of infighting within the two, um, the left side, the left hemisphere, which is a complete separate brain, the right hemisphere, which is a complete separate brain, they are um, connected, hardwired, but um, they work individually. And then there's um, individual, um, you know, there, there, there's, uh, there's individual uh, CPUs and um, the way that RAM works and everything inside the brain. So you have multiple, um, you, you have multiple brains, um, so, you know, so to say, as separate entities that deal with, um, you know, what you're seeing, the eyesight, all, you know, different, there's all sorts of different, so, so they're always showing, well, this is where you're thinking, and they're always doing these different things where, where they're checking to see where brain activity is happening. All those different areas are individual and separate areas. They don't, it's not just one homogenous brain thing. That's, that's, that's why tumors will attack a certain part and that's where they'll be in, in their own little part something that's shut down and all of a sudden the brain doesn't need it and a tumor suddenly appears because nobody's feeding that area with the nutrients that, that the, the the brain takes from everything you know that takes for a different area that needs it it's all allocation based okay now, when you um, when you have somebody who's in balance, that so, does everything correctly, right. What, correct when they're in balance, because a lot of people will, will hear "imbalanced" as the same thing. Go ahead. Oh yes, when you have somebody that has balance that isn't is in balance. Why would that person ever die? Oh, well, you, you also have um, bacteria. You also have um, the system's um, defaults for when a person is going to die. Those things are um, sitting there. You have um, the amounts of chemicals that are producing um, our, our bodies are no longer producing um, a lot. There's a lot of chemicals inside of the body that are no longer um, from an original human being. Um, they are now assimilated and synthesized through the synthetic um, use of things that shouldn't be in a person's body, such as antibiotics. And, um, a long time ago, people didn't um, ever think about pollen, and um, now everybody has allergies. Allergies is a self-inflicted thing where people 
um, have put in things and suddenly people start having food allergies or pollen allergies or all these different types of allergies. Um, a long time ago, people didn't have allergies. So all of the things that we've done to ourselves, uh, me included, um, uh, you know, I grew up with parents that fed me Wonder Bread. I am no longer human. We are all aliens now on a human in a, on a human planet. You're saying because you have you have been built by by foreign substances, so now you are inside the foods. A synthetic, no longer human. Correct. There's synthetic parts of you. There's no way to, to no. remedy that. To... There, there's no way to stop that because you're not going to get um, you're not going to get all of the hormones, uh, all of the hormones and the plastics and all of the uh, all of the chemicals and all of the uh, um, insecticides, all of the weed killers, all of that stuff out of the ground. It's all leached in. So what was uh, Jesus and, and... talking about? When he talked about everlasting life, See, that's was he talking about a soul? Everlasting life is not about a physical body. Well, the reason I always thought it was was because his physical body. You thought it was about your human body? I did. I always, I wow, mean. Wow, that's interesting. Because, well, the reason is is because I, I didn't think it was a novel mm-hmm. concept at the time to talk about the immortality of the soul. I always thought that was that wasn't something that he would be that wouldn't be a new statement for him. I mean, everybody believed in an everlasting soul back then, didn't they? They they, they believe that everybody believes in an everlasting soul. The, the 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 Egyptians were always preparing for it. Right. The, so the, the, so the it's not, it wouldn't have been. And, and, think, I thought it, it must it, be talking about something else, but you know that was just my interpretation. Well, it's 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 something else than all of the uh, people that consider an afterlife being something of their own um, ability to get to. where you can save all of the riches in the, of the world and you can amass a bunch of cows and you can pray to all sorts of weird stuff. And once you die, if none of that stuff is there, what do you got? So if you save up all of your worldly treasures and save nothing of your soul by having some, it's really about what you become. So if you don't ever pay attention to anybody else during this lifetime, on the other side, who's going to pay attention to you? You're not one of those people that people on the other side are going to want to talk to. So great. You get to the other side, you're alone. Have that you're alone. Um, How difficult is it for people to actually be alone? What does solitary confinement do to people? A, a very dif- a, a very much different thing, a very much more difficult thing, to go into a room that is um, that is um, extremely soundproof, and you go into a room and you close a room and you go where there is no so all of the sound that you can make yourself, your breathing and everything goes out. And it gets absorbed into the walls and there's no sound. All of a sudden you don't hear anything. And your ears start ringing and making noise. And all of a sudden, silence becomes deafening. And people go crazy. Now people, after half an hour, won't go crazy. They toy around with it. But if somebody is there for three or four years, they lose all sense of touch and the ability to recognize what's around it because um, we are um, like that. We use sonar. We, we, um, we call out so that we can hear our own voice. People just don't shut up. We, we, need, we need to hear ourselves. 
We need to hear the sound of other things. We need to hear the sound of trees rustling or the ocean or, you know, unfortunately the television running on and on seven days a week with, with news for a lot of people. So it's all, you know, the, the, the world's full of too much noise, but it's really the ear, you know, people need to hear stuff and it's kind of like babysitting, but once you do without it, you're in trouble. So in this world, if you don't make connections and you're all alone, hell becomes you. You don't have to worry about the whole Jesus thing or religion or anything. God doesn't care and he's not coming to save anyone. And there's no 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 babysitting going on. God's not a babysitter. So if everybody's waiting for God to come and reach them afterwards, that's when the Bible clearly says people will be like, Father, Father. And the Bible is wonderful enough to give this little beautiful um, thing that says that um, God will say, I do not know you, which isn't true. God won't say absolutely anything. You're on your own, dude. <laughs> right, because that would be that would be some some form of connection to even say that. So he doesn't there's even nothing, say. There's, there's nothing. You don't get that. Right. And then that's hell, what hell is. And then hell, that's be, hell. hell becomes you. You be you, you become it's 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 your own self-made hell for not sharing of yourself. Just a little bit, and you can you can fake it till you make it on that one, right? As long as so you, as guess, long as you say hi to people, right? Try to talk to people. It's basic I mean, basic acknowledgement. Yeah, it's it's interesting too because the same thing that would that sustains you is also giving the gift of 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 acknowledgement to them, which. Is, is is food for them. It's called paying and earning. It's like a money system. Right. It's paying interest to one another as attention. Interest. Paid in full with interest. And the interest part is where you actually listen to somebody and take a second and go, oh, wow. I'll help you, and then maybe you'll help me. Well, after a while, that person comes over and helps, and all of a sudden, two people working together, you can get a house built. One person carrying those big pieces of wood by themselves ain't going to go nowhere. That's right. So the connection, the connections that we can make just with – Strangers on the street are are right, and so and, the, the and, problem and people is, don't the realize problem that. Is that the, the problem is that people on the street are not strangers. If we call them strangers, then we are danger. Stranger danger is the way they say it. No, absolutely not. It's not about the stranger being danger. If you think people are strangers. It's kind of like thinking of a dog and thinking the dog is going to attack me and the dog smells that. What's the dog going to do? Attack you. Attack you. Because you're sitting there putting your vibes out and you're looking at it all freaked out and scared. What are you going to do? Eat it? It's going to attack first. So you freak out the dog. And you're sitting there going, oh, my God, no, no, no. It's, you're freaking out the dog. Leave the dog alone. But I think you got a real problem. Sit your ass true. down on the ground and the dog be like that. I, I look at reality that way. Reality attacks you if you don't – if you if you approach reality itself with a fearful kind of mistrust, reality attacks you in every form. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed it's that? It's so easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pete. It's so easy to just be easy, but no, people just won't accept being easy. Hell becomes them. Not my problem. Not God's problem. And it's not a God problem. It's not a Jesus problem. So Jesus and God 
They can be excluded from this conversation completely, and it will have nothing to do with people's chemicals, the, the eating disorders, the emotional problems. It's all caused by people, self-inflicted. It's 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 sort of. I mean, I, I always viewed it as the obligation of personally that it's my obligation to feel good. Like I, I need to make sure that I'm feeling good because if I'm not feeling good, but let's let's get that straight. Self love is already a given. But I think some people some people don't believe that that that's what life is about. Life they they think that it's okay to feel like crap, and I I think it's not okay. Oh, that's completely different. That's something where people are are using that as a tool to get attention. And people will argue with me all day long about but uh, misery loves company. And when somebody's actually miserable because they've been excluded, um, that is a different thing. And there are victims out there when they are being attacked um, racially, um, you know, due, due, due to um, all sorts of different things. You know, it's a, it's a vicious world out there. Humanity is an animalistic society, and people will hate that. There's, a, you know, there's that. But the human animal virus is, a, is, a, it's the human animal virus is alive and kicking, and people, um, you know, do not like others to even look at them, don't even look their way. So people are supposed to walk by and not be heard, not be seen. It's people's rights to be left alone. When people are about to die, um, privacy is the most important thing. No, at that point, those people need somebody. <laughs> need somebody. You know? Everybody shuts the doors, shuts themselves in, keeps everybody out. Family protection above everything else. Make sure that nobody talks badly about anything. Healthy comes them. Well, you, you, it, it seems like they set up systems where they're like, "Oh, you're dying. Let me help you. Let me help you die." Oh, Instead that's different. Helping. That's different. That, that, that's when that. Those are the people that are prized that are doing this for the purpose of uh, um, the health system, the 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 the, the, the overlying, um, not underlying, even though it's underlying through the whole entire doctor system of that. Um, you know, you know, there's, there's either, um, you know, it's all about priests and it's all about doctors and it's all about lawyers and it's all about accountants. That's that's a people construct, and it's not the accountants. The accountants should be there. The the the, the psychiatrists should be there. The the the, do, the doctors should be there. The priests should be there. Um, all those people are um, giving attention. Um, to people, and yes, it comes at a price. Yes, it comes at a price, and it's unfortunate that all of the insti- institutions, um, like the National Institutes of Health of the United States, which is a health organization, is a for-profit entity, which it's not a for-profit entity due to the government, but all of the stuff that they do there is so that people take pills and those pills are being, um, you know, sold through all of the pharmaceuticals, and the pharmaceuticals are tied completely to the um, to to the, uh, the the whole entire healthcare system. Um, even the even the hospices are, you know, even even the mortuaries. Everything is um, for the purpose of moving people along to a nice, you know, a, 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 a nice dirt bedroom, you know. Yeah. Take a dirt bath and six feet under and off to rest. Yeah, it's, it seems like there's a there's a whole industry of of death. But it it's Good. it's not actually the industry that's at fault. It's that people um are not willing to take the time to drink a little bit of water and go out and buy a little bit of um spinach, um, uh, uh, understand um, 
how butter works, understand that butter is not bad for you if it's grass-fed butter, and that things have don't have the nutritional value of what butter did, you know, a thousand years ago, or or or, or the different animal fats that were being eaten, you know, five thousand years ago, or being in the jungle. Um, no, we don't we don't have um, we don't have that advanced of a civilization. We're making it a plastic advanced civilization with the hopes that AI will carry on. Um, society is sick. Not to say that I don't like iPhones and computers. My God, they're fantastic. Well, you there? Me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm here. I think we can. <laughs> um, I think we can wrap it up here. Um, is there anything that you want to just add in a final thought about the subject? Mortality? Oh, oh, that's the subject, right? Yeah. Immortality is all about love. Oh, that's well, what, what people what are you... dealing with. Because the connection. No. When people say, will you love me forever, why would people get married to love one another? And true love, which is supposed to be everlasting, even friendship is supposed to be how long friendships last and everything standing the test of time. And everything that stands the test of time is an immortality problem. And there's, um, there's all sorts of different angles that you can go through looking at it. Um, you can go through the Pinocchio um, problem of, since I'm a tree, um, I happened to have a cousin a long time ago, a, a, a distant older cousin, who was actually the one that was turned into Pinocchio because Pinocchio was a wooden, a wooden boy. And the wooden boy goes through all of the struggles of immortality, the struggle to become a child um, and, you know, have, you know, be able to, uh, it, it, it is the struggle of immortality, the, the, of mortality and being alive, physically alive, um, for the purpose of being able to love. So the, the, the ability for things to have human feelings um, the emotional connection is a struggle for immortality. So that's one of the struggles that they're going to have with, with AI. Is, and that's the first thing they're trying to figure out is how do they get something that, they, that, that, that walks around that ends up um, having some sort of a way to um, adapt itself, uh, learn, so to say, and um, over time get to the point where it could start feeling um, empathy or, or, or have a reason to have the fake tears get pushed out of fake glands. Why? And what is the emotion tied to all that stuff? All that stuff is about people's um, need for immortality, which is um, part of the whole entire human um, system of reproduction and why do parents have children for the immortality? That's 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 certainly one form of it, like uh, genetic immortality. Well, the, the the immortality that you live on in somebody's life forever. So once you right. die, you're still you're still in somebody's mind. Yes. And that's an that's an immortality. That is. Okay. Robert, you, yep. and um, we'll be back again talking more subjects, but uh, I think we got some good information here for everybody, some interesting prank calls, but uh, other than that... I thought that uh, they, were actually, <laughs> they were actually pretty pretty good in my opinion. I thought it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> At least, All right, at least we'll, they were listening. <laughs> we'll leave them. We'll leave them in. 
There you go. All right. Well, so we'll talk soon. You too. Thank you. Yep. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Take care. And thanks, everybody, for listening.